What happened to Cool in the Gang? The band formed in Jersey City, New Jersey in 1964 when seven school friends decided to perform together as an instrumental jazz and soul group called the Jazzy X. Among them were Robert Cool Bell on bass, his brother Ronald Bell on keyboards, Robert Spike Mickens on trumpet, Dennis D.T. Thomas on saxophone, George Brown on drums, and Charles Smith on guitar. Their first performances were as the opening act for a weekly jazz night held every Sunday at a local theater. During their early years, they also collaborated with McCoy Tyner, Pharaoh Sanders, and Leon Thomas on occasion. The Soul Town Band and the New Dimensions were the group's subsequent names, during which they played Motown songs as the supporting musicians for Soul Town, a tiny organization akin to Motown. They chose to perform under their name in 1967 and were regulars at the Blue Note Lounge in Jersey, where one of the MCs announced them as Cool in the Flames. However, their manager Gene Red advised against it to avoid confusion with James Brown's band The Famous Flames, leading to a further change to Cool in the Gang in 1969. Following the announcement of their new name and lineup, Cool in the Gang signed a recording agreement with Delight Records, Red's new independent company. The trio went to the studio to create their debut album, Cool in the Gang, in 1970, which was entirely instrumental, with Red serving as producer, arranger, conductor, and partial songwriter. It's the band's only album with guitarist Woody Sparrow, who rounded out a temporary eight-piece lineup. On the Billboard R&B chart, the album reached number 46. Following their debut, the band issued two live albums, Live the Sex Machine recorded the year before, and Live at PJ's both in 1971. Before their parting with Red, these were the final albums. Music is the Message, their falling album, was the group's first foray into self-production. It was released in July 1972 and reached the R&B chart at number 25. In November, the band released Good Times, which featured the band accompanied by a string section. The album's mix of jazz, rock, and instrumental sounds makes it difficult for viewers to categorize into a single genre. It did at the time and still is now. The album did not receive the amount of radio airplay that the band had hoped for. Cool and the Gang had begun to notice disco music tendencies by the spring of 1973. Wild and Peaceful, their fourth studio album, debuted at number 33 on the Billboard 200. It was their first gold album with 500,000 copies sold and featured the hit track Funky Stuff, which charted in the top 40 of the Billboard Hot 100. Light of Worlds 1974, which included the famous instrumental Summer Madness, sustained the band's success. Cool the Gang had a commercial low point in mid-1976. Open Sesame 1976, The Force 1977, and Everybody's Dancing from 1978, their three albums released during this time did not get the same commercial or critical acclaim as their earlier releases. With female vocalists and a string band, the ensemble attempted to incorporate disco elements in songs like The Force and Everybody's Dancing. The band earned some popular exposure during their low period when they contributed Open Sesame to the soundtrack of Saturday Night Fever from 1977. Rocky from 1976 featured Summer Madness, however, it was not included on the soundtrack album. By 1979, Cool and the Gang had taken two divergent musical paths. They took in a committed lead vocalist to become a focal point of their sound after several years of consideration and at the advice of promoter turned solo records founder Dick Griffey. South Carolina-born singer James J.T. Taylor filled this hole, noting that vocals provide more warmth to the songs mainly ballads, which the groups have previously avoided due to the lack of a suitable voice. Some band members and the female singers they employed on The Force and Everybody's Dancing reacted negatively to Taylor's entrance. The band shift in style was accelerated when they signed a four-year deal with Ymir Diodato, a Brazilian musician, songwriter, and arranger who helped them transition to mainstream pop and dance music with a stronger emphasis on memorable hooks and chorus lines. Stevie Wonder, the group's initial option, was unable to practice with them due to a scheduling conflict. Ladies Night, Cool and the Gang's first album with Diodato was released in September of 1979 and became the group's most successful record since its inception. The smash singles Too Hot and Ladies Night, which reached number 5 and number 8 respectively on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, aided this. 
Ladies Night was certified platinum by the RIAA in January 1980 after selling 1 million copies in the United States. Celebrate was a bigger commercial success than Ladies Night later that year, with the lead single Celebration remaining the band's only number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Robert Bell was inspired to write an international anthem after hearing the lyric, Come on, let's all celebrate from Ladies Night. After attending the American Music Awards, the band wrote the song aboard a tour bus. The song was included in national media coverage of the 1980 World Series, 1981 Super Bowl, and 1981 NBA Finals. Following the success of Something Special from 1981, the band recorded their fourth and final album with Diodato as one, which built on the popularity of the previous two albums. The latter struggled to get gold certification in the United States, prompting the band to leave Diodato because they were unhappy with the path they were taking. They subsequently opted to co-produce their second album, In the Heart, from 1983, with Jim Bonifond. The album featured the top five single, Joanna, in the United States. Broadcast Music International named the tune the most played pop song in 1984. Bonifond stayed with the band for Emergency, their best-selling album in the United States, with 2 million copies sold. It produced four top 20 singles in the United States, including Emergency, Cherish, Fresh, and Misled. With this achievement, Cool in the Game became the only band in 1985 to have four top 20 singles from a single album. Cool in the Gang took a break from recording Emergency in June 1984 to perform at Wembley Stadium as part of Elton John's sold-out summer show. Bob Geldof appeared at Phonogram's London offices in November to offer the label his idea for the multi-artist charity record, Do They Know It's Christmas. The project had participation from Cool in the Gang. Bell claimed in 1985 that the band kept control of its business affairs by avoiding full-time management instead of hiring advisors and agents for each project or a single term. Forever, the band's 16th album was released in November 1986. Victory reached number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 and it reached number 2 on the R&B chart. And Stone Love also reached number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100 and it reached number 4 on the R&B chart. They were two of the album's hit singles on the Billboard Hot 100 and R&B chart like I mentioned. Two further singles from the album Holiday and Special Way were released. The former charted in the top 10 on the R&B list, while the latter charted at number 6 on the adult contemporary chart. The band had 14 top 40 hits in the United States by 1986, more than Michael Jackson. The band recorded a unique version of Celebration with new vocals in July 1986, which was used in a Wendy's commercial. The band performed a 50-city tour of the United States in 1987. During the tour, Robert Bell and Taylor established their own public service initiative, which encouraged school children to seek education by providing free tickets to those who had perfect attendance. At Prince's Paisley Park studio, the group rehearsed their stage presentation with the choreographer. Because of their new image towards children and their belief that it had run its course, the band halted producing advertisements with Schlitz beer at the start of the tour. Taylor quit Cool in the Gang after the tour to pursue a solo career. In 1996, he returned for their album State of Affairs. Taylor's resignation from the band to pursue a solo career was announced in the press in February 1988. During the previous year, the band had discussed pursuing solo projects, with Thomas claiming that the band had pondered splitting into two or three different groups. Three vocalists were brought in to replace Taylor, Cindy Skip Martin, Odeen Mays, and Gary Brown. Sweat, the band's 18th album, was released in 1989. Khalees Bayon and Robert Spike Mickens had also left the band by this point. The record was not favorably received. In 1992, the band released Unite, their 20th studio album, and Mark Khalees Bayon's comeback to the group. Taylor rejoined the band in 1995 for Stave Affairs from 1996, which was praised as the band's comeback record. Khalees Bayan and Taylor wrote all the tracks on this album. In 1999, Taylor quit the band for the second time. Cool the Gang's next studio album, Gangland from 2001, focused on hip-hop influences. The CD featured rappers who were supported by Cool and the Gang and remade some of the band's tunes. 
Another album comprising remakes and new songs was released in 2004. Artists like Atomic Kitten and Lisa Stansfield collaborate on the hits Reloaded. The album debuted at number 21 the R&B albums chart in the United Kingdom. Still cool, the band's second album in the decade was released in 2007. The album debuted at number 31 the Billboard Top Soul Albums chart in the United States. Still Cool was also awarded platinum status by the SNMP in France. David Lee Roth invited Bell and the rest of the band to open up for Van Halen on their A Different Kind of Truth tour in 2012, which they accepted. This was weird at the time. People thought, why would they tour together? Different kinds of music. But Roth realized that a large section of their live crowd was female, so he said, might as well work it out perfect. And it was successful. A lot of people like that. In 2013, the band released Cool for the Holidays, a Christmas album. This was their 24th studio album. The group was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2015, 50 years after their formation. They were also inducted into the New Jersey Hall of Fame that year. A Jersey City roadway was dubbed Cool in the Gangway in 2016. The Marian Anderson Award was also given to Cool and the Gang in 2019. Ronald Bell died in 2020 at the age of 68. Perfect Union, the group's 25th studio album and first album of new material in 14 years was released in 2021. Before his death in 2020, Ronald Bell produced the album. Dennis D.T. Thomas died in 2021 as well. He was 70 years old. And as of 2022 in April, Cool and the Gang are still together. Heck, even when I went to Disney a month ago, I saw them perform live for a couple of songs. And they still sounded good, even though most of the original members or crucial members are gone. They're still keeping on. And that's what happened to Cool and the Gang. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And here's a playlist of some of my favorite Cool and the Gang songs. Let me know if you have any experiences with some of their songs or if you've seen them live in concert and once again thank you again for watching and i'll see you in the next video